Welcome to part two of my work on creating tangs for our Dyneema rigging. I had some really helpful comments in the last video, so I thought I'd look at where I am now and what I'm planning to do. So first, and excuse the wind noise, and if I have to run for cover because it starts raining, it's a terrible weather today. This is that first prototype with both sides on and you can see I've put the equivalent width of a stay. It's not actually a stay, it's a test, but you can see how the angle is set about right and that it does actually fit. So let's look at some of the concerns that people have raised, what I think I should do about them. One is, is FR4 the right material to use for this? And I'm not wedded to FR4, I am wedded to a solution that doesn't require a lathe that can be made with hand tools when you're at sea. Not committed to FR4, that could well change. The second concern was that the bolt doesn't fit flush to the end and that definitely needs to be addressed and I'll show you in a minute that I hope will allow me to address that. Another concern was that compared to the tangs which were bolted close to the mast, I'm moving the pull further out from the mast, causing greater leverage to bend the bolt. When you look at where this is sitting on there, I think any difference is really, really very, very marginal. So I'm not concerned about pulling it away, but what I am going to do is because whatever material I use here is going to be non-conducting I'm not going to put any washers spacers between the rod and the mast so that will keep this closer. Another concern was that I did the hole too close to the edge well I mentioned that in the video and when you look at this one which is going to be tight you can see hopefully there that I can put at least 10 millimetres without the sheave, add the sheave, so I'm down to about eight millimetres to the flange for the spreader. So I can go quite a bit closer to the middle of my rod with the hole. Clearly what I need to do, and I'm gonna be doing hopefully this afternoon, is building a jig so I can make those holes entirely repeatable. The other thing that I mentioned before and I've changed my mind a little bit on is that I hadn't fitted end plates and what I'm going to do is fit end plates on both sides both the outside and the inside of these FR4 discs and they will go up as close to the spreader as I can get them and still be able to fit the loop over to get it in and the two end plates will be joined then by a little Dyneema lashing so once i flipped the rope over the shroud over the end plate and put the lashing on there's no way that it can come off even when the the shroud is completely slack because you're raising the mast or doing some maintenance or something another one which i am going to have to make some changes was pointing out to me how dangerous it is to have anything load bearing on the threaded part of the bolt so i need to see if i can buy a bolt that will come out far enough without the thread what i should do apparently is just use washers all of the fr4 is uh, resting on plain bar and washers add the spacing so that the nut can get it tight what i want to do is i'm going to make these very slightly about three millimetres wider at the top here, just to give me a little bit more wiggle room. And then I'm going to put the hole closer to the middle, but first, after the cut, I'm going to put the end plate on. Let's go and see where I'm going to be doing that. First, it's not a proper unboxing because I've taken it out of the box, but I've got some things from UK Drills, which hopefully will help me achieve what people were wanting. I've, I had to make the order over 50 pounds to get free shipping. So I did some extra bits. So I've got some stepper bits. I know I've seen lots of people raving 
about how brilliant these are. So I thought give them a go for some jobs. I also learned for the first time about these numbered sets of drills where you can get drill bits that are part way between different millimeter sizes. I didn't find a full set to buy, but I've got a new set of drills that range from one to 10 millimeter, but with all the half millimeter sizes. That will allow me to get a much tighter fit on bolts in a number of places, I'm sure. So I've got a 12 and a half millimeter drill bit. So I drilled the FR4 with a 13 millimeter bit because it's a 13 millimeter dr uh, bolt and it does wobble a little bit. So I will try the 12 and a half millimeter, see if that fits. And because the bolts on the main mast are um, nominally 16 millimeter, I've also got a 15 and a half millimeter drill that again, hopefully will give me that closer fit. And then the key that uh, was suggested to get the bolt to sit flush is to counterbore. So I've got a set of Horstner bits and those are sized, I've got one individual one as well, um, so that the washer should just go inside the hole I drill with the Forstner bit, which will be the first hole that will go down vertically and create a level seat for the washer. But I will make sure that I use a Forstner bit that's large enough that I can fit a socket set onto the bolt and the, and the nut. By getting the, the bolt head to fit properly flat, that will help remove any stresses. Getting a tighter fit on the bolt and avoiding the FR4 on the threaded bits should all be really significant. The other thing I'm going to do is fit the end plates first before I do any drilling. So at least for my prototypes, while I'm still using FR4, I've got the two millimeter thick FR4 sheet. So I'll be cutting end plates out of this and epoxying them onto the, the shaped rod, the tang, before I drill the holes. By having the end plate on both ends, I am confident that I'm not going to run any problems with the shroud getting stuck off the edge of, of this into the washers. I'm talking to AI Plastics, where I've been buying my FR4 from. They've got so many different types of plastic and I'm trying to get some expert suggestions from them as to whether I should be using FR4. I chose it because I've had such good experience with backing plates, it came out so well. Let's see, a practical sailor magazine or practical boat owner tests the backing plates a few years ago and FR4 came out top of the list. But just because it's good for a backing plate does not necessarily mean it's good for this. And whether there are issues with potential for stress cracks or with UV, or where on the bolt going through it, it might be that there's something that would be better to use. But my first choice is still to use the rod because it gives me that beautiful round surface for the shroud eye to rest on and is something that you could work with anywhere. And I've got, um, what is it, five different sizes of these as I'm going to need to make. So that's mizzen where there's a single shroud, mizzen where there's two shrouds, main mast single, main mast double, and the main mast backstays. It would be impractical to say, well, I'm going to make a complete spare set. One of these may wear out much, much faster than all the others. So rather than making one complete spare set, if I can make it out of the raw materials while I'm out, then I've got to carry far fewer spares and, and we'll be covered for far more repairs. Let's uh, get on and do some experimenting with the drilling on this for the force in a bit, first of all. What I've decided to do first is create a way of clamping the rod. I'm going to sand that out so it can grip that properly. Screw a plate across these so that they can be hinged and then I can clamp this end together pull those together 
to hold that absolutely securely. Here we go then, my little jig which holds the uh, FR4 rod firmly. So I'll be able to put that on to the drill press and uh, make sure it's aligned consistently. I'm now going to experiment with forcing a bit. Now the guidance is that I should drill the forcing a bit first and then act with the centre point of that act as a start for the 13 millimetre drill. I'm going to call this one scrap and I'll put my forcing a bit hole in that larger gap there. Just got to decide which size I want to do it. So I'll do some test holes in some uh, plywood first. Right, I've got my 19 millimeter socket, which is the right size for the 13 millimeter bolt and the size of the washer and the size of that socket set are the same. I've got a 32 millimeter and in my beautiful little box, I've got a 25, a 30 and a 35. I'll just hand drill through this bit of ply and we'll see which ones fit. Okay, 30 millimeter it is, 25 too small, 30 comfortable, even though clearly why I need the jig, I didn't get that quite centered perfectly. Now let's try using the force and a bit on the FR4 which I've had mixed views as to whether that's going to work. So it'll be interesting to see. Now, one of the things that uh, I'm intrigued about to see, if I can just, um, is whether this edge will touch before the point, because the point isn't very far down. Okay. It's hitting here first. I'm not sure whether that's a, a problem. Is that going to knock it sideways a bit? Let's go very slowly. They say that uh, FR4 has, on the AI Plastics website, has quite a poor rating for machinability. That's pretty much exactly the point on the hole on the pencil mark that I made. So that's quite good. Oops, GoPro blew over. Haha. <laughs> Not very ideal. I will really want to use the vacuum cleaner when I'm doing this, so I can't hold the GoPro, pull the drill, and hold the vacuum cleaner. That's past halfway. It's going to go to the point where it's scoring it all the way around. Right. I reckon that is a nice flat surface. Still feels sharp. Let's uh, take that off and have a look. There, I reckon that should be quite a good surface for the washer to mount on. I'll now change the drill bit. I'm going to try the 12 and a half millimeter drill bit and see if I can get the bolt to go through that. So it's a really snug fit. Ugh, it's horrible. It's starting to rain quite hard now. One of the challenges of getting that repeatability is I'm clearly going to have to change the height of the platform between the two different drill bits. That make it a bit harder to get exactly repeatable. Not quite low enough. Right, so now we need to get That's going through very nicely. Nothing like a brand new drill bit. Oops. Oh. Oops. Everything happened at once then. The rain increased. The wind blew the GoPro over and the drill jammed at the bottom. So let's just try that last bit again. Right. We have a nice looking 
<laughs> we have a nice looking piece of FR4 and we caught the GoPro, so that's all good. Let's have a look. There we go. It's that hole with the counter bore that we're interested in. Now let's see if I can get the bolt to go through that. I'll just... Uh... How do people do this? I haven't got enough hands. Does that fit in there? Well, do you know what? I think it might. Now let's put the socket set on and see if that will go through. Well, looks like the bolt is screwing down through the FR4, coming out the other side. Yes, what will it be like when it reaches the shoulder or whatever it's called, where it goes from threaded to smooth? So that is very tight. Is that how tight I want it? Is there an issue to do with heat expansion? Because presumably they, the FR4 and the stainless steel will expand at different rates when it gets hot. So clearly what I'd love is a 12.7 millimeter drill. Well, you can see though that the washer is sitting beautifully flat in there. So that's a triumph. I'm gonna give up in this rain for today because I don't like tools risking getting wet. We're definitely in, in an improvement in terms of the accuracy of drilling the hole in the right place, in terms of getting the washer and bolt head to lie flat and knowing that I need to buy a slightly longer bolt. I'll do the full measurements once I've built uh, the tang and can see exactly what it should be. These are the revised version of the mast tangs. Still undecided as to whether long term I'm going to use FR4 or not, but uh, as I've got the materials, I've made these two. So I don't want to move it because it hasn't fully set. But you can see that's the end plate on the sloping side. So that will be the side against the mast. And then this one will be the retainer. And there's just a small enough gap between them for the uh, shroud loop to go through. I've also got my tangs. They've got the cut to the right size of the rod and I fitted the two end plates. They're not shaped yet properly, the, the end plates. I'm waiting on the 12.7 millimeter drill to arrive and then that will go onto the drill press, press that way put the force in a bit to create the counter bore and then the 12.7 millimeter bit to create the hole for the bolt. So I've got two of those. They're gonna need just some trim of that and they're gonna need a bit of sanding and they will be hopefully ready to use. Quick update, I'm just working on my mast tangs, carefully, hopefully in the right place marked the center for the counter for the forstner bit and now drilled that out and you can just see perhaps that's the line of where it's stopped cutting through the end plate so i'm really pleased with that it means that there's quite a significant amount of the end plate that will be under the washer so we'll obviously assist the glue in that staying on I know that my end plate is gonna be too long uh, and this won't fit on until I've done that. But I'm now going to be able to use that center point there to drill with the new 12.7 millimeter drill bit. Okay, I think that's perfectly aligned into there. Let's have a go. Oops. Good idea to take the chuck key out first. Duh. Oh. 
perfecto. Okay, so I've got to take this down to that line there. I've got a line on the other side as well. Try this belt sander first. Okay, let's go and see how well that fits, if at all, on the mast. I've got my bolt through and I've got a splice going, uh, eye splice going around it. It's not the right sort of splice, it's not a locking Brummel splice, but it's what I've got handy. So let's see how that fits in here. Put it through the compression tube, which is rather loose, so it's a bit worrying. And that goes just underneath this riveted on piece for the shroud. This has got nice clearance. Remember, this doesn't have a chase leaf on it, so it'll be a little bit bigger, but it's definitely well clear, not touching. The only thing I can't do is take it off at this point. So because of these ones right next to the shroud, I'm not going to need a retaining line and I'll just have to undo the bolt enough that I can rotate the fitting and then I'll be able to get the shroud off. So when it comes to replacing shrouds, I don't need um, to be able to unbolt it completely, just to slacken it off enough to be able to rotate it, which is about five mil. There we go. That is what a tang will look like. And I have to say, that is what I was hoping for. I think that's going to be pretty darn good. Hi, it's Monday the 4th of July. I'm just putting this video together to put it on YouTube. And just to let you know where we are now, this I think is fair to call a second prototype. I think it would work. It would certainly be something you could make anywhere with very minimal tools if you just had that uh, bit of FR4 sheet and FR4 rod. I'm going to be trying a Mark III this week which will f use a different type of material from FR4 and a different way of constructing it. One that I think I will have the tools when we're traveling to be able to do but requires a little bit more um, technical tooling than uh, just a saw and a drill. So that will be coming out in hopefully about a week, deliveries depending. In the meantime, I'm going to be working on another video which covers the same time period and shows the work to build a strong mast foot for our mizzen and also the first fitting of our Dyneema chain plates. So we are working on both ends of the rigging so that we can get the mizzen mast up soon. Still got the AIS aerial and a Wi-Fi booster aerial to come which will need to go to the top of the mizzen mast before we put it up. Hopefully that means lots of exciting stuff coming in the future videos. Look forward to your comments and your liking, subscribing, sharing and joining with this community because you've been really helpful in uh, designing what we're, we're building for these mast tanks. We do really appreciate all the comments and all the thought that people have put into helping us. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up.